Hello and welcome to my retro watches. For those new subscribers, my name is Mike. And how do I follow on from the last video? The Seiko Willard, the story of how I met Keith and how he used that watch. That video became the second most watched video I've ever had and the most successful video I've had in over five years. Uh, monumental, uh, I'm amazed. Uh, but thank you very much everybody for watching it. But I don't know what to follow on from. I've got this one in front of me. This is a Zenith, a Zenith Defy. Is it going to defy my watchmaking skills? I don't know yet. We'll find out as we go through this video. Now, uh, this watch actually isn't mine either. Um, this is a friend of mine called Geno. He gave me this watch to try and repair over two years ago. Can you believe this has been kicking around for that long? Uh, but now is the time to get on and see what's wrong with it. Uh, it's a really interesting model. Never sure if this is going to come out in camera, but we'll see in a minute when we get it out of the case. It's got a lovely textured dial on it. There is a bit of patina there, though. And the problem it's got is, well, it's the crown at the moment. The, the watch will run. And we can turn the hands, as you can see. But we push that crown in and we can still turn the hands. Um, so either the stem is short or... The stem is incorrect. I don't know at this moment in time. The watch will run, uh, but it won't hand wind, of course, because of that stem. Um, it is an automatic as well. So let's get it out of the case and see what's going on inside. Okay, let's get the case back off. And there's the movement. It looks very nice. Also looks like, well it is, let's face it, an ETA movement. And from what I've read about uh, Zenith, a lot of them were high beats. Some of them were 36,000 vibrations per hour. I'm not sure about this one just yet, but we'll find out possibly later in the video. So we have what looks like a movement ring here. And that is pretty much seized in there. Now there are a couple of screws which could be holding that in but I'm not sure whether they are. Let's undo them anyway. Now see the balance is actually spinning. It's spinning very fast, which indicates to me that it is a high beat movement. Some nice little blued screws as well, but this is the cause of concern. The only sort of point I've got is where the crown was to try and pry. And that really doesn't want to, to budge. So straight away, the watch is living up to its name, isn't it? It's defying me. And I don't want to damage it too much. But I need to see where I might be able to pry. Aha, uh -huh. well, looks like the whole thing is now coming. I don't necessarily think that is a good thing. But there we are, the movement is out of the case and I can see straight away a lot of black gunk here and that is a really rotten gasket. You can see it's all pretty cruddy. Uh, I've seen that before, these gaskets sort of just melt over time and uh, cause havoc inside. So let's put the stem back in and see if it's just that the stem, is, the stem is short, see if we can do anything with the movement. So the stem is back in. I'm always conscious if I pick it up, I go blurred on the camera. But no, look, that's as far as it will go in. It still moves a hand. So I've got a sneaking suspicion it's the wrong crown. It is a plain crown, and I'm sure Zenith would have a signed crown as a rule. 
but we'll soldier on it could still be something wrong in the keyless works but that is a pretty good indication to me so let's get stripping the watch down and uh, see what awaits us inside so i'm just going to try and push it from ah uh, yes i can say try and push it from the bottom and that has released the dial surround or the movement surround and you can see the gasket let's get the camera shot properly gasket everywhere there so that'll be a bit of a pig to clean off i need some good solvents sticking even to my finger cots i'm trying to decipher whether this is one part or there's actually two rings together there at this moment in time i can't tell but we'll clean that later on and see what we get Dial removed, lots of old gasket all over it, uh, making it very sticky and be a bit tricky to clean that as well. And I'm not sure whether we can see that tarnish or not. I don't think there's going to be a lot we can do about that at all. Still a lovely dial though, all the same. So I'll keep that somewhere safe and carry on with the strip down. Okay, let's start on the dial side. Now I can definitely say I've never been in a movement like this before. Um, and I'm not a professional, of course. So, like with a lot of my videos, it's have a look and see, and see if we can work it out. Some of this looks vaguely familiar. A little tricky spring stuck in here. Bigger tweezers. Managed to get that one. Right, we've just got the keyless works to come out. Now I want to leave them in for a minute because I don't know how much power is in that mainspring. And I've got to figure out how to take that down safely. Uh, what I have noticed, well obviously you can now see that the watch is running running quite well really uh, what is more is the crown is in full and if I turn that that's actually winding the movement pull it out and we're hacking excuse the wheel jumping out no big deal should remove these two anyway so the stem is correct there's either something that was wrong in the keyless works or well, the stem has been cut too short because uh, that is 100 percent definitely operating as it should so let's flip it over and see if we can find out how to release that power safely so here we are on the business end and hopefully you can see this so if i try to wind you see the reversal wheels go which is pretty cool that little bit there is the click so hopefully I should be able to just hold that and got to be careful because it wants to take my tweezers with it. Let's carefully let all of that power out. It's actually got quite a lot of power in it. There we go. So the watch is now disarmed or safe. 
little bit of residual just left in it there, look. Uh, but let's flip it back over, take the keyless works out, and uh, then we can get on with the business end here. Very stiff that uh, stem. So it could even be, if I hold the stem up to you, that it's still got a lot of that gunk on it. Perhaps that was fouling it, who knows? I guess we'll find out on the rebuild. So now I'm looking a bit closer on this side. You can see that it's a 2832. I'll research that one and see if that's a 36. Thousand high beat. I've got a succinct suspicion that it is. Interesting, we've got two blued screws, but only two blued screws. Um, yeah, maybe I should blue some more screws. I've got a kit to do it, so we could possibly try and decorate it a bit more. Who knows? Let's get on with the business of taking it to bits. There we go, movement stripped down. And you know what I like about this movement so far? It's only three small springs in it. It's nothing like that Cities that I did a while ago. I had seven or eight even. Uh, if you're not seeing that video, you need to go and watch it and see how nervous I get over Shepherd's Crook Springs. <laughs> so one last thing to uh, disassemble on this. And that is all this reverser setup. This is all to do with how it transfers the power from the rotor down into the main spring. And these are devilishly difficult sometimes to rebuild. You've got to get all the wheels in the right sequence. And um, just looking at this one, it doesn't look too bad. Some Omegas that I've done in the past have been horrific. We have one screw though that holds it in place. And I think for safety, I'm gonna get a bit of Rodico. When they only have one screw, sometimes that can be a bit of a faff when it comes to rebuilding it. However, it has got two location posts, so we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. And 
and then it's remembering this sequence down down that one's above everything else and the roddy coast <laughs> gone through and held them in place as you can see okay so strip down complete what can we conclude from that sticky parts clearly it just needs a service we'll figure out that crown issue whether that's a definite uh, issue with the stem or it's just again some crap and something maybe not in alignment who knows let's chuck it all in the cleaning machine and get on then with the rebuild just preparing for cleaning i just thought i'd show this ring again please excuse the state of my hands um that is all an old gasket I'm pretty sure these are actually two parts. You can see daylight through it. And I've seen this many times. The gaskets sort of just turn into treacle. This is an old oil oiler. Look, I can just put that in there. So that is horrible. And for the time being, it's just gonna go in the ultrasonic first of all, see if I can soften it on a high heat with some um, detergent. And then fading that, out comes the thinners. We'll have to try and get it to clean up. We can't put it back in the watch like that at all. Right, first part, first problem. Welcome to the rebuild of the Zenith. Um, really frustrated, really angry now, annoyed, everything else, disheartened, you name it, it's all there. And joys of watchmaking. So what's the problem, may you all ask, if you can't see it? The barrel arbor here, well they have a little hook on them, hooks into the mainspring. There's a hole in the end of the mainspring here, and that's what it catches on. And then when it winds the spring, of course, it um, has something to purchase on to wind. What's happened here is now it will not fit at all. I can't really turn it very easily to show you and try. Maybe that comes through. Um, so why is that? Because obviously it fitted before. And I put it down to the damn mainspring winders. So here is the mainspring winder I've had to use. For those who've got a set, this is a number seven. I've chose that because the handle, or this part, is the right size to go in and fit into the barrel. But of course, this post, whatever you want to call it, shaft, 
It's really, really big. And if I had to literally force the mainspring over it to get it on. And the result is, I think it spread this one open. And now it ain't gonna work. So I can try to bend it back in place. Uh, but every time I've ever done that, I always snap them. I think you've got to heat them up really to try and do them. So realistically, I've got to order a new damn mainspring. And that is the joys of these spring winders. I've never been a fan of them. I keep openly have put in posts on my Facebook group saying I still prefer to hand wind, although hand winding is supposed to be a really negative thing and you shouldn't do it because you might kink or do some damage to the spring. But I've hardly ever made any damage to a spring hand winding, yet I've trashed more springs using these things than they're worth. And here we go again. This will probably be another spring now. It's going to cost me £20. And the set of these cost me, I don't know, maybe £100, £120 second hand. Um, and they've scrapped at least 120 mainsprings, £120 worth of mainsprings. So there you go. Rant over, really frustrated. Um, see you in a few days when I've probably got a new mainspring and we can carry on the rest of this build. Well, another day and another mainspring. This is from a 2824, but it says it's also compatible with a 2832. So a bit of a lifesaver, cost me about eight quid. Uh, so uh, yeah, not bad, <laughs> damage limitation. Also found out that uh, for ETA, um, mainsprings you need a special mainspring winder for ETA movements because of that uh, center coil there being a lot smaller than the ones on my winder set found that all out in my Facebook group uh, loads and loads of people in there really really helpful so for questions like this don't struggle guys just join the group ask the questions you get answers pretty damn quick uh, there you go okay let's start Now what I will say here is I disassembled this watch some six to eight weeks ago and I can't now remember how to put it back together again. I've got obviously the disassembly video. I can't even get the escape in, there we go. <laughs> I've got the um, disassembly video and a couple of snapshots that I've taken as well. So hopefully all is gonna go well. And I'm also trying to follow along a little bit to a service manual. I can't find one for a 2832, but I've got one for a 2824 and um, a 2836. Uh, both look similar, not quite the same, certainly on the calendar side. So I just put a bit of D5 onto the barrel. Oh well, so far, then we have this rather tricky wheel. It likes to squeeze in. Oh, look at that, it's just falling straight into place. <laughs> We're on a roll. All right, clean my oiler. Bit of 9010. That does look a bit strange, doesn't it? Um, I don't think I've ever seen a post sticking up like that. I can't honestly remember. Right, okay, well, let's stick it in. That just. Yeah. Right, you guys saw the video only a few moments ago, probably. I'm already hitting a conundrum. I can also see what looks like one of my fingerprints on the barrel there. Well, let's worry about that in a minute. Right. So that should mesh with this. That's definitely meshing with the one from the barrel there. And this should should touch the escape. That is a hundred percent wrong. That is weird. I 
So it's got to be something to do with that, but why would that, how could that have moved? All I've done is wash everything. Right. Right, problem solving in my own head here. Um, anything I can do, take the wheels out. Well, for a start, I can look back at the old video, can't I? What I could also do, actually, let's stick that in there. This will prove it. Then I'll get the cannon pinion. Right, it's the cannon pinion with possibly the hour wheel attached to it, I can't remember now, or a wheel attached to it anyway. So can I undo the movement? Can I catch this on film? That's the other thing. I can't seem to get it out of the bloody... <laughs> Amateur watchmaking its best, guys. Here we go. All for your viewing pleasure. Right. I'm going to have to tilt that up. Try and see if it's in focus, because I can't really tell. Hopefully that is. So we can see the second hand's pivot pointing out, can't we? Right, can I... It not very easily, no. God, this is impossible watchmaking. <laughs> right, get that. Get that to sit on there like that, right. That is as far as it goes. It doesn't even, it's not, can you, can you guys see that? That is 100% wrong, isn't it? So that tube, if you call it that, has moved. But how the hell has it moved? Have I put this down on the table or something and then knocked it? How do I push it back? And how much do I push it back? <laughs> oh no, this is going to be a dilemma. Right, I'll tell you what, I've got a new tool. I've got a hand press tool thing. I'm going to set that up and let's try and see if I can get it to work there. This is already, what, five, ten minutes of discussing this. Let's try and solve it. Okay, I've got no idea if this is going to work. It might knacker up the end of my tool. But it's anything I've got that will come straight down. I also don't know how much you're going to see really with the camera set up. Yeah, well that, that was a success. <laughs> that's just gone straight in. Oh, well that's a relief. I thought we were onto a dead, um, dead watch straight away. Okay, set the camera back up, carry on. Right, where was I? If this is your first time at the channel, this is what you get. This is how it is from a hobbyist point of view. Nothing is as straightforward, as slick as everybody makes it look. We all struggle, we all make mistakes. The difference is I like to leave all mine in. Uh, I think it's entertaining and you see me struggle uh, live, so to speak. It will be the moment of truth coming right up. Right, this time, bit of Mobius. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> for a minute there. Right, that is. Is that meshing? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Cool. Okay. Bridges. Get the bridges on. I'm way off there, aren't I? No, the escape has come out. Yeah, escape by name and escape by nature. Maybe that's why they call it an escape. They have all... No. Yeah, they... <laughs> oh, that's the quickest train bridge I've done in ages. Look at that. They're all lined up, I think. See the escape spinning, spinning fine. Right, a couple of screws, and then we'll move on. So all those wheels are turning nicely. So let's move on. We have a part here, the hacking lever that you didn't see on disassembly because it got stuck to the bridge that I'm about to uh, fit. Hacking lever is basically a little switch so when you pull the crown out it'll move this and that little arm just touches the balance, stops the watch, enables you to set the watch accurately to the nearest second. So that just lies on there. Then we got one of the simplest of bridges Oh, but first, of course, let's not get carried away. I need to oil the top of that. So I'm still on D5. I will be upgrading soon to the, uh, I think it's HP 1300. I uh, just need to get a bit more funds together. I've just spent quite a lot of money on other tools and um, products recently something I'm contemplating doing a video on actually like the bench update show you the tools I've got and things like that just making sure the bridge is down there we go so three screws then we can move on so the click spring tiny tiny little thing this There we are, that's installed. Followed by the click. All right, the spring has come out of position okay Bit of D5. Keep on being hampered by the camera. There we go.
this has an offset screw which is also left handed and I can instantly tell you that I think I've got the clicking wrong yeah there's something I haven't got the clicking right ha <laughs> ha no No dress rehearsals. Yeah, that is the spring coming out. Oh, what a mess. I'm pretty sure that's right. Of course, those amongst you who are, well, you know this movement or familiar with ETA will be screaming at me <laughs> down your screens. There we go. Ah, that's a bit of a relief. So with the clutch, I'm going to make sure it's engaging with that hacking lever you can only just see. A bit more grease, new grease for me. This one, the blue stuff is uh, Mobius 9504, probably worth more than gold. That expensive. Then we've got the setting lever, which just needs a bit of D5. before it's carefully fitted by my professional hands. There we go. <laughs> so we have this part. Then we have the yoke, and with the yoke you've always got to make sure it's in the centre of the clutch there, or else that will cause some trouble. Then the next of the dreaded springs. Now I'm in interested to know how other people tackle springs. I like a bit of peg wood and try and secure it and hold it as best I can. I've seen other people on YouTube do it different ways. I guess it's whatever works. But I'd be interested to hear your views, so you know, leave comments below. Any tricks, anything I can do to improve. That one is not wanting to go in because I'm talking. Now I think the yoke has jumped out. Yes, for you, you can probably see it. So the yoke is out of the clutch, which means I've got to remove that spring again. I'm going to do that bit off camera if you don't mind. Okay, that's in now.
Now on to the good stuff. Let's see if we can get the pallet fork in. Normally I like to do this on the microscope. When I'm set up with the camera I get so much light dazzle off the movement from the angle I'm sitting at. It's usually quite hard for me to see the pivot in the jewel. And there's no exception. <laughs> That pivot is really, really small. Okay, let's put it on the microscope and sort that out. Now the pallet bridge, which is quite an interesting component on this watch. And I can tell by the way it rocks like that, that that jewel and pivot are not lined up. And this, way, this is like if you're an amateur or a beginner, where a microscope is then a game changer because little jobs like this become a cinch. Now I haven't got the camera set up on the microscope at the moment, so please forgive me about that. But I'll just do one second on that and it'll all be lined up perfectly. Okay, the best bit now, get the balance in. I really got hold of it a bad way. <laughs> oh, well it's spinning, that's the main thing. High beat, so it's going to be going quite quick. And that looks great at the moment. Of course, we've not oiled anything. I have done the bottom shot jewel, I will confess to that off camera. But we'll all oil all the other ones up, get on the time grapher and have a look at its performance. So this is just a bit of D5 for those two. The 9010. Similar on this side. Now the balance is on, it's the best time to check the movement's health on the time grapher. This is the result I'm getting. And it's not all that pleasing, to be honest with you. I can deal with the rate, I can deal with the beat error, I can't deal with that amplitude, and I don't think it's completely true either. Um, when I originally put it up, it was well, about 250, 260, and then it's dropped dramatically. So not 100% sure why that is. Um, it would indicate possibly that mainspring, but it's a brand new mainspring. It's slightly thicker than the one it came out as well, so it should have a bit more power. So is something wrong? I can't believe it's the time grapher either, but it just seems a little odd to me. Um, at this stage, I don't know what to do. If I try and tilt this, focus back on that movement. I mean, this is the trouble with a really high beat movement. It moves so fast, you can't really tell. But to me, with my eyes, um, that looks all right. So I'm still finding it very hard to believe that it's now, well, it's now gone up to 149, whippy woo. Uh, let's just turn it um, to a different position and just see what that does. 
So it's still following the same lines, isn't it? I'm going to go all the way to uh, dial down. Hmm, not sure. Not sure what to do. I might just quickly take out the uh, pallet fork again and give it a little inspection um, just to be sure. Now just put it in the movement holder. I haven't done anything to the watch, just put it in the movement holder. Stuck it back on the time grapher. And that's more like the reading we want to see. So I'm thinking, well, I don't know what to think. I'm going to think that it's all right and carry on with the build and then once it's in the case I uh, will get a better understanding of what's going on that is a bit of a risk because if there is a problem now then I have to strip it all back down again um, but yeah let's just crack on so now it's time for the reversal wheel setup and these reversal wheels if I'm not going to put them in that way I've had to oil just in here according to a manual that I've got it's not quite the one for this caliber but it's close enough also then tells me in the manual that I shouldn't wash these parts. Well, it's a bit late for that because they've definitely been washed. Would help if I tried to fit it in the right way. There we are. Bit of D5 for all the pivots. Okay, this is the uh, centre wheel and it's got the cannon pinion attached to it. It needs oiling from the back here. And realistically, I need a microscope, but I've got no room on the bench at the moment. There's that many cameras and bits and bobs. My other trouble is my eyes, eyesight isn't as good as it was even five years ago when I first started this. I don't even know to, <laughs> if any oil's gone on properly. So maybe I'll clean it and oil it on the microscope anyway, but you kind of get the gist. This is just a bit more D5. Now the centre wheel with the cannon pinion, which I should have put on first. Also, uh, I had to clean it and oil the whole thing again under the microscope. I cl clearly saw that I'd oiled it everywhere but where it was supposed to. Which is typical, you'll see that in the edit, no doubt. So I have this little sliding wheel. And I can't find anything in the manual that tells me if it needs oiling or not. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease there. I could be wrong, but uh, we live and die by the sword. And if you haven't got a manual, you've just got to try and use your noddle a little bit. And I'm thinking oil might run there, grease might stay. 
stay in place. Correct me if I'm wrong, comments below as always. So time for the calendar works. And once again, it's just remembering how it all goes together. So we have the last spring, which is uh, gonna be a bit of a nightmare, I feel. Springs in. Can I persuade it to fit that? That is one tough, tough spring. Well, it's in. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Hopefully it's in correctly. I think that's right and it's not meshed that little wheel there isn't near yeah, look it's not in at all ah okay right <laughs> refit it okay pretty sure that's gonna work now just put the part, part in that slot and carry it all together Something's not right, it's still not going, is it? I would put myself on film doing movements I've never done before. <laughs> it's a recipe for disaster. Right, I'm going to take that off again and see. It is very late here, it is quarter past midnight. <laughs> and am I losing the plot? I would expect that wheel. Well, I can't expect it to turn, can I? Because nothing's binding with it. <laughs> well, I did say it was late. Oh, and I'm going bananas. There is, of course, the hour wheel that has to go on at some point, isn't there? Now, I know there's a cover between that, and then that's what's going to mess you with that, isn't it? Oh, dear. Well, at least that's what I hope. Right, let's just... Assemble it all, get back to where we were, carry on. Okay, our wheel is just resting there now. And look, everything turns. So let's just forget the last few minutes happened and I made that mistake. A little smidge of D5. I somehow don't think that grease is going to find its place, but we'll see. I should have put it on before I put the spring. Two screws here. A lot of concentration going on from my part. So I just need the hour wheel. A 
make sure it's meshed. Then I've got this little cover plate. Okay, manual set still works. Now I'm a bit confused here. This did just come off. It doesn't feel like it engages into anything. Okay, it must just work with the uh, friction of the dial, I think. So uh, we'll think about putting the dial on. But that is the main part done, and I tell you what, that is a big, big relief. It's been a right old struggle, probably not one of the best uh, builds I've done, but enjoyable, it's always a learning curve. And remember those rings that I was pretty sure were two well they definitely are um, a lot of um, alcohol in the ultrasonic on a hot wash managed to get rid of that old gasket so I can still now use these uh, and put the dial up when it looks like the watch has bitten me yet again I put the day wheel on as you saw and then actually put the dial on and found out that the quick set would work for both the day and the date but then when you wound it to 12 o'clock only the date would click over and not the day which was a bit perplexing so i took the dial back off i've had a good look around all these parts and thinking well nothing looks out of place um but equally nothing looks like it would ever change it over and then i found out why so i'm going to go onto the microscope now to show you so on the microscope, this is the little data adjusting wheel, if you like, and um, that there at the top is the finger that changes the date, and that's sort of spring loaded, as you can see. And then if I turn this up, this is quite difficult to do. I didn't use this microscope to find the problem. So we're missing the day finger, which would click it over at 12. And if you look here, that is sheared. Whatever was there is completely sheared off. I put it in my Facebook group. Somebody put a post up from a forum um, back, I think, in 2019. Guy with the same problem. And he was able to source that part. But I think he must have been the whole wheel itself. This 2832 seems to be quite a rare movement. I can't find any parts for it at all. And that's a real shame because I will not be able to fix that without a new part. So we're going to have to just carry on and deal with the consequences that, well, we'll have to manually change the day uh, every time we want to use the date facility. Despite all the mess, this is my new tool. Straight from AliExpress, uh, cost me a hundred pounds, I think, something like that. And the version version, the version version is like a thousand pounds from Cousins. And granted, the version one is gonna be a little bit more accurate, a bit better. But for this, um, for a hundred pounds, I've already used this quite a bit and I actually quite like it. So I'm gonna fit the hands using this. A 
And lastly, the second hand. Oh, hooray! It's finished. Okay, I've got to put the uh, the the rotor on, but uh, I'll do that. The next shot you're going to see is the finished watch out in the daylight for us all to enjoy. Because I'm sure this video has been really long so far, but you can't believe how relieved I am to finally get to the finish line on this one. Wow! Before I show you the finished watch, I should really show you the fruits of the labour. And there we go. It's running quite sweet. To be honest, the little scattery dots you can see are literally every time I start talking. Um, I don't think the uh, time graphic can cope very well with this 36,000 beats per hour because I do see the amplitude fluctuate sometimes quite drastically um, for no reason at all. Um, so I'm definitely calling it a win. On the movement front, I think I must have serviced this quite well. Just trying different positions, crown down. Looks still okay. Crown up or pendant up. Still seeing a nice, fairly straight trace. And then of course, dial down. So 100% pleased with uh, what I've done here. Of course, the watch had one problem right at the very start though, didn't it? Have we cured that? So the start of the video seems like a long time ago now, I'm sure the uh, crown operation wouldn't work, would it? So now if we pull it all the way out, of course, I can set the time. Push it in, I can wind the watch. And somewhere in between, I can change the date. So solved the problem, fixed the repair. Uh, super, right, let's cut to the outdoors, show you some nice shots and finish off the video. So here it is, the Zenith Defy. And did it defy me? Well, no, it did its best to try and trip me up at every occasion, but I somehow managed to keep picking myself back up and carrying on. And this is the fruits of my labor. It's taken two years to get round to it and then nearly eight weeks probably to take it apart and remember how to put it back together again so i hope you enjoyed this journey thanks for coming along um if you like this video then please hit the like button that's all i ever want to ask from you guys it really does help my videos go up and down all the time and the the likes and the comments really do help and spur me on so Leave your comments below, answer any questions I may have asked. I will read every comment. I will try to reply to as many as I can. Now, you're only getting a sneak preview of this watch because I have now also released a review of this watch on my second channel. And I really encourage all of you, if you've sat here for the hour long video, to just nip over there. It's a 10 minutes. You're going to see it in better light. Uh, and hear a little bit more of the backstory to this watch as well. And perhaps while you're there, you might enjoy the video so much that you would consider subscribing and watching some more of my content because I'm still trying to grow that channel and I need the help from you guys. So there we go. Like I say, thanks very much. Um, there's things in the description. So there's links there to the other channel so on and so forth some to my website have a look at my collection tool page there it's affiliates so you can click and buy some tools and i would earn a commission which certainly does help to try and grow uh, the channel further with some funds that i need to keep bringing watches like this for your enjoyment see you soon bye for now